as far as as great as the face feature is, when you need to do a lot of um, you know faces quickly, you know as fast as possible, um, what's a great feature is the flange command. So uh, on the onset here, you can see that I can pick an edge, and what it's going to do is it's going to start the flange feature. Now from here, I've got some options, as in you know which direction, so I can flip it. Um, I can come over here and I can set the distance. You know, I can actually go to a particular face. Let's just bump this up a little bit. Let's make this two. I can change the angle if I want. So maybe we want this to be at 60 degrees. I can override the bend radius. So maybe I wanted this to be times 1.5 in that case. So we're going to override the default a bit. And I can also come in here and set where it's actually measuring that distance from. Now this is kind of an important thing because what does this two inches actually represent? In this case here, you can see that's the bend from the intersection of the two outer faces. So if I was to extend this face down and I was to extend this face out, that's where it's measuring that distance from. But notice I could flip it to the bend from the intersection of the two interfaces. I can set the bend location. So is the location of the inside of the bend faces? Is it the outside? So you notice that the face doesn't change in size, the face remains fixed. Um, or is it the, the outside of the base feature? So you have you know, options on how it's measuring the height of that flange as well as where the bend is actually located. Now I can continue on here and I can actually modify the unfold rule it's going to use in that particular bend. I can, I can change, now the relief shape is not going to have any impact in this case because I'm going across the entire edge, but I have some control over that relief shape as well. So I'm going to click OK and notice that that feature has been created. So it's been created at that particular angle and it looks good. So just like anything else, I can double click that flange feature. I can say, well, it really should have been 1.75 and I really wanted that to be 90 degrees and we'll click OK and you can see that feature is updated. Now I'm going to run the flange command again. So we'll do it on this, on this top face here, but I don't really want it along the entire edge. So I'm just going to expand this here and I'm going to say, well, instead of it being the entire width, what I want is I want the width option because I only want this to be one inch wide. And right now it's centered, so it's not going to let, actually let me change its position, but I could actually do an offset and then say I want it offset from this side here and I want it offset a quarter inch. So you can see that it's, it's located there, it's offsetting it away because the default has relief shapes on there, it's actually going to cut a relief shape in there. I'm going to click OK and we can see that it put that tab in there for me. Now let's go back into that feature, so I just double clicked on it, and what I'm going to do is change this from width, I'm going to change this from offset. Now with the offset option, what you do is you specify an offset from both sides. So I want it offset one inch from that side, or like a quarter inch from that side, maybe instead of 60 here, we're going to go 75 degrees, and I'm going to click OK, and notice again that it's put that flange in there. So in that case, I don't actually specify the width, I specify the offsets from the, from the two ends. Also, there was a from to option in there, so if you had some existing geometry, you could say I need this to fit from here to, to there. Okay, well, let's delete these two flanges. And what's really where the, where the power comes in here, where the, the speed comes in, is how you can actually select multiple edges. So I'm going to use a flange, and I'm going to say this edge, this edge, and this edge. So you can see how it's gone through, and it's, it's going to create the flange on all three edges at one time. So let's change this, now 60 degrees is fine. Let's put this back to the default bend radius and let's make the distance 1.5. Now I've kind of skipped past it, but notice these little glyphs on the screen here. What these allow you to do is actually override those features per instance. Whereas, you know, if I change this bend radius, this is changing it for all the radiuses in all three flanges, where I can come to this one specifically, sorry, this is the, the width extends. So I could change it specifically for this one or what I can do is I can actually change the corner conditions. So maybe what I'd like to do here is instead of the, the gap being you know, the default size, I'd like to divide that by two, and I'll click OK to update that. So the idea is you can go in there and be specific about each feature um, within the, the creation here. So I'm going to click OK, and we can see that it's, it's started that box for me. Now let's do the same thing, and notice how it will automatically miter the corners for me as well. Now that will only occur if you're doing them at the same time, because if I went and did one and then, you know, finished the feature and then created another one, then it's not going to do this automatic mitering. So you can see how it's automatically going to miter those corners for me. So I've picked my edges, it looks good, I'm going to click OK, and we can see the, the box that it's, it's created for me. Um, so again, 
faces are super powerful commands and that they you know creates various bands but we need to be you know to be faster and more efficient the flange is, is a great feature because you can pick those multiple edges but yet still have the flexibility to to kind of change them on the fly so that's building flanges within the sheet metal environment